Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Two days ago, we found out from an inside source, so it, it was confirmed, that uh, there's going to be officially filed an XRP ETF. Now, it wasn't filed literally two days ago, but that's when we found out. And the market reacted a little bit, but uh, not, not anything insane. Uh, and then it was literally yesterday that we got official word that the ETF was officially filed for uh, with the SEC. And shortly after that, the same day, literally yesterday, we also had the <laughs> official word from the SEC. Yes, they are going to appeal the Torres ruling in the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit. Uh, so couple things here, uh, and this is a good question. Is this something that is going to prevent the XRP ETF from moving forward? Uh, fair question. I have some thoughts on that. Uh, and then also a pretty reasonable question to ask is, were those were those asshat pricks over at the SEC uh, timing this so that they could do as much destruction as possible to the price of XRP and thus XRP holders? I think that's a reasonable question. But before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so here was the official post yesterday. Uh, this was um, it came out at 8.05 a.m. Central Time, and it's posted by Bitwise. They're the ones... Uh, uh, filing that have filed for the XRP ETF. This is their official account. And they wrote the following. Today we filed an initial registration statement on form S1 for a new Bitwise XRP ETP. And I'll pause to note, they said ETP there. Uh, so an ETF is, is a, it's like a, a subcategory of, of ETP. And for the purposes of this conversation, that's all we need to know. But yes, it would be that product, uh, exchange traded product. Uh, an ex exchange traded fund for ETF. Um, and then they wrote the following. We believe blockchains will usher in new apolitical monetary assets and permissionless applications for the 21st century, said Bitwise CEO Hunter Horsley. We aim to help investors access the opportunities in the space and are excited to continue that work with our filing for a Bitwise XRP ETP. So you'll love to see that. Everybody's all happy. Everybody's excited. Um, I've been saying for a long time, it's an inevitability that at some unknown point in the future, there will be, uh, I've even said multiple filings for XRP ETFs, and that at some unknown point in the future, they would ultimately get approved, even if the SEC tries to slow them down. It's an inevitability. You cannot stop this forever. So not surprised to see this. And with the Ethereum uh, ETF getting approved or, or just a little bit earlier this year, uh, I, I don't think I don't know how the SEC could possibly justify uh, not approving an XRP ETF. That doesn't make sense. Although more on that in a minute. So Brad Garlinghouse reposted that, and he said the following: First Bitcoin, then ETH. It was only a matter of time. This move underscores the growing trust and integration of digital assets like XRP into traditional finance, marking the continued adoption and maturation of the crypto market. I sense this is just the beginning, right? So it's a time to be happy and uh, it's it's a big move, especially after all the nonsense that uh, we as an XRP community have gone through with the SEC over the last several years since they uh, falsely claimed that XRP itself is a security, but my God, did they get their asses handed to them in that case. That's, it was By the end, it was a delight because the rejoicing that we got. Now, um, since it's over, in, in, in a way, I'm glad it happened, but... I, I, that's only because it's over. Like, I'm, I'm glad we got the legal clear. I'm glad about that part, okay? I'm not glad that we had to go through it. I'm not okay with people's financial well-being uh, that's harmed. I'm not okay with having missed a, a bull run last cycle. But I am happy that at least we got something good out of it. We have actual legal clarity. XRP is the only, uh, only large cap coin in existence. Not even Bitcoin has it. But it's the only one in existence that has legal clarity. Uh, but there are some people that are concerned and believe that we are not going to get, uh, as a result of this appeal from the SEC, we're not going to get the XRP ETF approved. It's not going to happen. And so here's a post from Dom. He said, the chance this XRP ETF gets approved now is near zero. This appeal can now take an additional 6 to 18 months. So it's too bad. Interesting why Bitwise didn't wait to file this. 
And so uh, certainly nothing against Dom whatsoever. I saw stuff, uh, you know, posts like that sharing that concern uh, all over the place. And it's reasonable to have that concern, um, in particular, if you, you don't know what the legal standing is. Now, I happen to know because I've been following this very closely. I've, I've been following the developments that have been happening in this case literally for years. And so when I found out literally over a year ago that even if the SEC would ultimately appeal, it would only pertain specifically to, uh, to, to Ripple's transactions at that point, I was like, oh, we're good. And so the, the reason that we had concern prior to the ruling is because you never knew for sure if there was going to be some sort of a, additional a dicta from Judge Torres that would have been negative for XRP holders. But after that didn't happen and, and we saw, OK, here's what Judge Torres said. We knew at that point after July 13th or well, on July 13th of last year that uh, if there was going to be an appeal, there are only so many things that could be appealed. And it would only specifically pertain to Ripple's transactions. So back, I knew over a year ago we were in the clear, and I've been screaming it from the rooftops, but not everybody knows this, and that's okay. Not everybody follows this as closely as maybe you do, for example. I'm sure I'm sure most of you uh, listening have heard of this, and if you hadn't, that's it's fine. No dig against anybody. Uh, but that's why I'm trying to spread the message that it, people can additionally be aware. So I'm not going to read the whole thread. I, I was kind of curious as to why he was thinking that, so I had a response to him. Um, but he was asking you know, for a, a source ultimately, because I was saying, no, it's not the case. Like, uh, it, you know, it, this doesn't impact XRP's legal clarity. It doesn't impact anything with uh, secondary market transactions. Uh, you know, as far as if you and I are buying on an exchange, it would only uh, impact transactions specifically with Ripple. Uh, and so um, he asked if there was a, a source for that. And I, I said, well, hey, you know, basically, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing my own response at this point. I was basically like, hey, it's been beaten in my head by multiple attorneys uh, within our community that uh, this would only apply to those uh, those transactions that Ripple conducted. And I'm taking their word at it. I've got it from multiple reputable <laughs> attorneys out there. Uh, they've all said it from attorney Hogan to attorney Deaton to attorney Bill Morgan, uh, uh, Fred Raspoli. Like, you name your attorney that's in the XRP community that would that has been you know, covering this for years. And they, they've all said it. So I don't think that they're all wrong or lying. And we got the same thing from, uh, you know, executives at Ripple, including the chief legal officer, Stuart Aldrich. It's like, we already knew this, right? Uh, but I, I wanted to provide some clarity. And so here is a post from uh, attorney Bill Morgan of the XRP community uh, citing just that. Now here's, here's what he wrote. And I appreciate him taking the time to share these thoughts and clear this all up. Uh, but the reason I'm sharing this is to be clear, since this is the case, there is no justification possible from the SEC to not approve the XRP ETF, and it would not make sense for Bitwise uh, to pull the application or anything of the sort. In fact, because they're not stupid at Bitwise, if they thought there was a chance that an appeal could change anything about the legal standing of XRP, they would not have filed when they did. Think about it. The deadline for... Um, for uh, this is uh, a, a filing for the appeal. If, if the SEC is going to do it now, we know they did. It was by the, the sixth or seventh, maybe it was the seventh. So it, it point is we were days away. So if they thought that there was even a half a percent of chance that this would screw things up for them, they wouldn't have done it, but they know that it won't. And they have a legal team that would advise them on this. But here's what attorney Morgan said. There is some confusion in this matter about the issue of secondary sales. Some people treat Ripple sales by the programmatic means to retail investors via exchanges as secondary sales. So I'll just pause the note just to make sure we understand what he's saying. Um, you know, and I think you probably can call it that. Like if Ripple's selling their XRP on an exchange and then somebody named Bill buys it or Matt or pick your name. You can you throw your name in there for fun, for funsies. Well, if that happens, you can call that a secondary market transaction. Uh, if you want to call it that, well, okay. Um, but note what he's saying there is it's still a transaction that Ripple is is a part of. And when Ripple has sold on exchanges, that has been those transactions have been known as programmatic sales. That's what Ripple called them. And as a result of Ripple calling them that, that's what they were called in, in the actual complaint filed by the SEC back in December of 2020. So those, if you want to call them that, that's fine. I mean, they are. It's just usually when people are talking about secondary market sales, what they're usually thinking in their minds is, oh, like you and I buying from one another, buying and selling to each other on like Coinbase or something like that. And, and those are, those are secondary transactions, but it doesn't mean that Ripple can't have a secondary market transaction on an exchange also. But it is the case, as Attorney Morgan points out here, that, you know, 
the, the transactions that can be, uh, or the portion of the lawsuit rather that in the ruling that can be appealed would only apply to Ripple. And so here's what he said, check this out. Judge Torres did not rule on secondary sales in the sense of sales made by you and I if we go onto an exchange and sell XRP to other retail investors. The judge made this clear in a footnote in the summary judgment decision. That issue was not decided and therefore cannot be the subject of appeal. So there you go. He's, he's, that is the key point. Transactions that people, regular people like you and I, make on an exchange were not the subject of this, uh, this lawsuit. Um, it wasn't decided on by Judge Torres, so there's nothing to appeal. You can't appeal what wasn't even a part of the final decision. She didn't say anything about it. Therefore, the SEC literally cannot appeal because it, there's no decision there, okay? That's that, period, end of story. So there's that and the legal status of XRB does not change, period. Uh, and then he says, the appeal in terms of liability is limited to the programmatic sales or other sales and distributions of Ripple. Exactly, spot on. The appeal could, of course, extend to issues concerning the penalty, injunction, and disgorgement issues. I had an exchange some time ago with Attorney Fagel, that's a former SEC attorney, and I recall that we both agreed that it was most likely, although not certain, that the appeal will be limited to the issues concerning programmatic sales and other distributions. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And the SEC has been kind of bragging like, hey, we got a victory on this uh, the monetary side of this thing. So it's, it's way higher than what Ripple is asking for. It's also way lower than what the SEC was asking for, but never mind that, right? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's probably, I mean, that, that would be the only thing the SEC would genuinely care about, really, right? Or what they care about most, at least, would be those transactions. And it's still silly. They're not really, what are they going to get out of this, man? Like a bigger penalty if this is, if the appeal is successful? Like, what, what are you... What are you even doing? What a bunch of pricks. So anyway, that that that's what's happening. But that's why I say, you know, if you're one of those people that's concerned, hey, uh, this could impact the ETF. Uh, no, the SEC cannot use this as something, as an excuse to not approve this. It won't work. It won't fly. And likewise, Bitwise, they knew about this. They knew the appeal could be coming. It do they know it doesn't matter. That's why they did it. I would be shocked if they pulled it. There'd have to be some sort of rant. I can't even imagine what would cause them to pull it. But it, I just, this, I would find that to be absolutely shocking. In fact, if they did that, I would find Bitwise to be incompetent and I'd be concerned about their entire business at that point because that, that's how stupid it would be, to be honest with you. Um, of course, there is then the question of uh, timing of all of this. And so there was, um, there was this post from the, the Crypto Basic early in the morning. They wrote, uh, it is strange that just a few hours after Bitwise officially filed an XRP ETF with the SEC, the SEC rushed to file a one-page notice of appeal on Judge Torres' ruling. So look, first of all, I, it's, it's not weird to, to just on the surface know that the SEC filed uh, for, for this appeal around this time. We, we expected it would be very close to the deadline. They, 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 they're always filing stuff close to the deadline. This part's no different. What is peculiar, it just so happened to be hours apart from when the Bitwise news uh, broke about the XRP ETF. And we also, or when it was actually filed. Technically, yes, the news broke the day before that. So the SEC could have decided, okay, uh, let's just wait until this thing is officially filed. And then if there's any sort of price action, we can just try and squash it. Uh, I, I, if they did that, they're like, these are such terrible monsters. I would not be surprised if that's the case. I can't know if that's the case. I'm not in their uh, hearts and minds, not that I'm convinced they even have hearts, but minds, they've got something uh, somewhat representative of a mind, I guess, even though it functions like they're mentally incompetent. But um, you can't know for sure. But that timing is more than a little bit fishy, right? Two things that would, in theory, impact the price of XRP on the same day. Now, of course, I think that, uh, you know, the, when the news came out and it was unexpected uh, the day before, before the actual filing, that would have been the day for it to pump, you know, not upon the actual filing. So if the SEC thought that that was going to ruin that in terms of price action, I'd still argue no. I mean, you got saw a little bit of excitement when the, we, the news came out on Tuesday, but eh. uh, so their evil plan failed because the, the price dip that we got, that was going to happen whether it was yesterday or today 
or a week ago. Like you, you would have gotten the little dip that you got. But even that, like people just don't care. Even if they're trying to crush the market, the good news is it it wasn't, there weren't that many people, XRP holders, that actually panicked about this and sold. There were not many. It was very small. It was smaller than what I would have guessed. Had I put a prediction out there, it would have been more than just a roughly 5% drop in price because that's about all that happened. After the news broke, XRP went from like 56 cents to 53 cents, roughly, in about an hour and a half. And then that was it. And then it just moved sideways for the next day. The panic stopped. There was almost nobody willing to panic. Frankly, it, and maybe it's because those people didn't know any better or feel bad for them then, but this doesn't impact XRP. And so it's very clear to me that most people knew that and have learned that over the course of the last, you know, you know, 15 months, r- roughly, at this point. Because we, we knew that this was the case in July of last year. So take it for what it's worth, but I just say even if they tried to, and they may have because these are terrible monsters, uh, in the end, uh, they ain't stopping this train. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.